Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our lunchtime learning education session. We are very excited to have Wendy Gang with us today um, from um, Promedia Hospice. And if I did pronounce that wrong, I do apologize, Wendy, but uh, we are greatly appreciative of you uh, spending your time and your expertise with us. So if you would like to um, do an introduction um, and then get started, um, we are very happy to have you. For sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Wendy. I'm with Promedic um, Home Care Palliative and Hospice. Um, we used to be part of uh, but we formed with Promedica about four years ago, and we just now changed our name. So I'm not even used to saying Promedica yet. <laughs> so, but what my job is, I'm a patient navigator. So I navigate patients through benefits that might be available. But my job is just providing benefits that people may not even know about. So um, thank you guys so much for having me. All right, so today uh, we're gonna, so we work our whole life. We can't really know what exactly what benefits that is gonna give us um, when we need it. Um, so there are actually four different buckets that we pay into when we pay into Medicare. Um, the first bucket is hospital. So when you're on Medicare, um, it will pay for a hospital uh, benefit. Um, you could still maybe get some co-pays and stuff like that. But as we know, I think everyone probably has been in the hospital one or twice, once or twice um, on this call. So we all basically know what a hospital stay is. It's something you're going to get treatment to get feeling better, whether that's pneumonia or just something going on like that's what Medicare paid for. That's what Medicare is there for, to help the hospital benefit and be able to help you get treatment for something that you might need. Um, the second bucket of care is uh, rehab. So there is rehab stays that you can go to after a hospital stay um, that Medicare will help pay for. Um, it is all mandated kind of by the Medicare and insurance benefit of how long of a stay it pays for rehab. So rehab, they want to see you progressing, right, to be part of the treatment of getting better. So that can include therapy and things like that in a rehab. So typically it's about 20 something days, uh, but if they see you progressing, it might need longer. You can always ask for an extension and Medicare will pay for that, but they have to approve that. Now, if you're in a rehab place and they're not seeing progression or seeing people participating in therapy services, they can also end that earlier than 20 days also. But I find like around 20 something days is about the average day of a rehab um, that Medicare will pay for. You just have to be participatory in the act of getting better and getting stronger because the goal for that is to go home. Um, so that is what Medicare pays for. So that's the second bucket. And now the thing to remember about all of these buckets is that Medicare will only pay for one bucket at a time. So if you're in the hospital, it pays for hospital. If you're in rehab, it pays for rehab. So, um, so that's why you hear sometimes skilled days in a rehab because that is the skilled days is what they're going for as Medicare paying for. You have so many skilled days that is covered under the Medicare benefit. Um, the third bucket is home health. And home health means that you are homebound and that you need like a therapist to come to you. It, it's, it doesn't even mean like you can't go out of your home at all, like to doctor's appointments and stuff. What it means is it takes a lot of energy, a lot, a big task to be able to go out of the home. So you can still be able to go to the doctor's office, things like that, but you might, it might just exert you. Like my grandma had eye surgery and so she couldn't really see great driving. So that qualified her for home health to do therapy for her shoulder. So instances like that. So um, home health requires a therapist to come again. Medicare does govern that a lot. If you're not participating in the therapy, um, they can cut that off sooner rather than later. Um, and what home health does, it, again, it's you participating in your health um, to be able to get back to where you were initially. So say you're up here, you may have fallen, you need some rehab. So the point is to get you back to where you were. Um, so that is what home health is and Medicare will also cover that. Um, obviously when you're in rehab, you're not getting home health because you're getting the therapy there. So again, Medicare will only pay for one bucket at a time. 
Um, and then the final bucket is the biggest bucket you pay into Medicare for and may not even realize it. Um, and that is the hospice benefit bucket. Um, so a lot of people hear hospice and kind of think that means very end of life and you're kind of giving up, but actually um, that's a big myth for hospice. Um, I think kind of the government kind of likes to keep it under a scary word because it's the only benefit under Medicare that you will never see a bill for. It's 100% covered. Um, and with hospice, it can go wherever you call home, whether that's at your house, your family member's house, a community, um, that's where hospice can follow you at. Um, now hospice is not just like for the very last few days, last few months. Um, and that's why I love my job. I actually get to educate and get people the benefit sooner rather than later because it's 100% covered. Um, under the hospice benefit, it covers a nurse coming out to your house. Um, and the nurse, usually if you're in a home, they like to come like two or three days, but they can come more if needed. It covers 100% of a nursing assistant coming. If you need assistance with bathing or any type of care, it can provide that. A big benefit of the hospice benefit is 100% covers a social worker. So you will have your own social worker that can provide resources whether that's help you filing for Medicaid, um, helping find maybe some private home care duty people. Um, they have all the resources there and can really help with that, which is huge to me to be able to have your own social worker. Um, it also covers spiritual care. So we have chaplains and spiritual care coordinators that can come out. And a lot of times people that aren't even maybe, um, you know, maybe have their own pastor or whatever, um, they just do it as a visit because a lot of people do not realize how being social can actually improve your health. Um, when you don't have socialization, um, which a lot of us, you know, unfortunately dealt with during COVID, we weren't going around our family members as much or seeing people. So being able to have that benefit and still have those people be able to come into your home actually helped improve people's um, health. And we didn't see such a decline people that didn't accept that benefit, we actually unfortunately saw a decline in during COVID uh, because mm -hmm. of the civilization. Um, the hospice benefit will also cover 100% um, of any medical equipment needed. So if you need a special mattress, if you need a walker, a wheelchair, an oxygen, it's 100% covered. Now, when you go home maybe for home health out of the Medicare benefit, you will like go help provide like the rehab send oxygen to your house, maybe send a bed if you need it. But what people don't realize is there's usually co-pays for that under that benefit. But under the hospice benefit, it's 100% covered. Um, so what we like to do is really try to look at what is the highest level of care that we can get for somebody because you paid your whole life into Medicare and you deserve to get that highest level of care. Um, and people don't realize that for, to qualify for hospice, you have to have a chronic illness, you know, something that's never particularly going to go away. It could be COPD, CHF, um, Alzheimer's. If you have a lot of falls, um, things like that, it can actually probably qualify you for the benefit. Um, I always tell people um, if maybe they're coming home with us on home health, I'll look and see if, you know, I think that maybe they could get that bigger benefit. And I say, let's send a nurse out. They see if you can qualify, they go over all the stuff with our doctor. And if you do qualify for, get the higher level of care because the more one-on-one -on -one care you get, the healthier you could potentially get because of that one-on-one -on -one care. And then if you happen to graduate off hospice, you can graduate and then go down to home health. Uh, but I would rather get people the highest level of care sooner because people deserve that. Um, my gramps was actually on hospice for a year um, he had fallen. Uh, he rode a four-wheeler and flipped it over on himself. Um, I know. And, you know, an 80-year-old going after these boys that were on his property, he wasn't going to take that. So he flipped the four-wheeler. Unfortunately, his organs were starting to shut down. He got on hospice and actually got better and graduated off of our services and came back home a year later. Um, so people can go on and off hospice. There's no, like, penalty through Medicare if you do that. We actually do see quite a few people graduate off of our hospice benefit and then come to us later on. Once you're on our benefit, you get someone like that me that just calls you every 30 days and checks up on you to see if you need it again. Um, we, do, so, we do have a question in the chat. Oh, 
Yeah. Um, so this um, is going back to, I believe, a, a previous bucket. Um, a patient in a nursing home and on hospice care, can she benefit um, doing PT in her location? Is there a limit to PT services for her situation? So yeah, so that again goes to the two buckets. So say so you're in a nursing home, you can definitely be on hospice care because we we go wherever someone calls home. But you can't necessarily out of Medicare buckets do therapy and hospice at the same time because that's taking out of the four buckets and not only people one bucket at a time. But the good thing, our company is one of the only companies that I know of. Our administrator, she's been our administrator for 25 years. She wants to do everything she can to improve quality of life because that's what hospice is. It's to have a better quality of life where you're at. Um, so she actually pays for therapy out of our pocket. So we do therapy for two weeks, two times a week. And then after that, we discuss with the therapist and the family member, is this improving her quality of life? If it is and are participating, we continue therapy for another two weeks. So we do it on a two week basis. If it's not, and it's kind of exhausting her and like agitating or something like that, then we'll talk with the family, be like, maybe therapy isn't the best option right now. But the good thing is when we're paying for out of pocket, if she denies the therapist, that's okay because we want what's best for that quality of life. So if she doesn't get cut off because she denies it. So she gets another chance to do therapy again. Unlike with home care and rehab, that patient is declining, that gets sent into Medicare, put on her chart, and then they kind of cut that off. Um, so sorry, I forgot to turn off my phone. Um, so yeah, so with our hospice, not every hospice, we do offer PT um, on the hospice program, but that's not typical because we just don't turn into Medicare. We kind of just take that loss um, because we want the patient to have the best quality of life. Thank you. So that's a great question. I and mean, that's a question that a lot of people don't know. And like some people will talk to a hospice company and they'll say, well, if they're doing therapy, we can't do it. So that's really what kind of distinguishes us. Um, that's why I love our administrator that we've had. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it will um, we'll pay for a nurse, an aide, a social worker, a chaplain, any medical equipment. Um, another thing that that bucket pays for that a lot of people don't know is it pays for 100% of any incontinent supplies. So a lot of people go bankrupt just buying those pull-ups, wipes, gloves. They are not cheap, <laughs> but they don't realize that they could actually be getting that paid for out of the hospice benefit. Um, so it pays for 100% any incontinent supplies. Um, it also pays for most medications related to diagnosis. If uh, we do not cover it, then it just goes back to their insurance, you know, and gets paid for how it was. But a lot of times we can pay for most medications also. Um, so that's why I think everyone likes keeping hospice under a scary name because as you see, that's a lot of money that gets paid out. Uh, but it's a lot of money that you pay into Medicare. So it's your money. Um, but if you don't use the benefit, they are not going to send you a refund check. <laughs> so I always tell people, if you qualify for it, use it. Um, and that's why I always like to try when I see people that might be on oxygen dependent or lots of falls. And, you know, the hospital and rehab, their goal was like just to get you home and kind of quickly get you out of there sometimes. And the easiest way is just to refer to a home health. Um, and that's why I love our company has all levels of care because when we see a home health and we see someone who can get a higher level of care, we can actually be able to educate them about that. Because um, a lot of people get home and can't do therapy because they can't catch their breath and then they get denied the therapy and then they get cut off and then they're just lost in the system. And unfortunately will end back up in the hospital probably within the next 30 to 60 days. Um, an average person, when they get in that cycle, they'll end up in the hospital four times and a rehab three times and on home care at least three or four times. And it's just kind of like a vicious circle. Um, hospice also provides a nurse 24 hours on duty, seven days a week. So if you have um, a need in the middle of the night, um, you can call us instead of having to go to the emergency room and go through that whole vicious cycle again. Our goal is to keep you at home um, and keep you safe because as we know, sitting in the ER is not fun and hospitals are full right now. And you're exposing your stuff, um, your loved ones to things that you don't want to be exposed to. So I love that we have a nurse on call to 24 seven and 
a lot of times people don't even know that's why they pay into Medicare and that hospice is the biggest bucket out there. And our goal is to get people on it sooner rather than later, because a lot of people do only use it the last couple of months of life when we actually have patients on it for one to two years. Sometimes they're on it for a couple of years, they'll graduate, come back on a year later. Um, so hospice does not mean that's the very end. Uh, we're all about giving hope. You know, you can remain a full code if you want on our services. Um, you can go to the hospital if you want. Just what would happen is if you were on our services, you wanted to go to the hospital, you would sign off on us so that Medicare would pay the hospital bucket. Because again, that's the four buckets um, of Medicare. So that's why I like to educate about because we just get a lot of stuff taken out of our paycheck and don't even realize what that's being used for when really it's just sitting there waiting for us. Um, and then I just had a few, which I can email this to you guys too, just a few myths about hospice and some facts. Um, myth number one was, I thought that if my mother was under the care of hospice, she could no longer go to the hospital if she needed to. When the fact is, why hospice strives to manage pain and other uncomfortable symptoms outside of the hospital, a hospice patient always has the choice of whether or not to go to the hospital. The Medicare hospice benefit covers short-term general inpatient care in the hospital when a patient's symptoms can no longer be managed in another care setting. Um, let's see, I got, see, I got a question. Is there Medicare provision for hospice applied to all 50 states or just Ohio? The PT, I think this patient ends massive PT. She's wheelchair bound, needs 100 assistance. Um, so yeah, so the Medicare provision is for all 50 states. Um, so it will only apply, you know, all the applies to all 50 states. It's just the Medicare in general. So if, um, you know, we cover all areas. So if there is a patient that you think could benefit for hospice and PT, we could definitely, you would just get a hold of me and we could take a look at them. Um, and if they could qualify for hospice, we could actually provide the therapy too. But um, in general, people do not have therapy and hospice at the same time, unless a hospice company is willing to pay for that out of their pocket. Wendy, I, just for clarification, um, before you continue on with the hospice myths, you had mentioned that to qualify for hospice, you have to have a chronic illness. And you had mentioned like COPD and a couple of other. Um, we see, you know, some of our participants have a cancer diagnosis that is uncurable. You know, multiple myeloma is managed but not cured. Um, and then we have others who have ovarian or breast cancer who might be currently in treatment with the goal of that cancer being eradicated and then become cancer free. Would mm -hmm. a cancer diagnosis be considered a chronic illness under your definitions? Yes, yeah, so a cancer is that chronic illness. If someone is going for aggressive treatment, more, um, they can all be on hospice and do an aggressive treatment at the same time. But uh, if you're a part of the VA and have VA benefits, the VA sometimes will allow, to, they'll pay for the cancer treatments and then Medicare will pay for the um, hospice part of it. So a lot of people on VA can actually do treatments and be on our services at the same time, but that's if they have the VA benefits that can like separate the payment of the plans. But yeah, a cancer diagnosis can definitely qualify you for the hospice benefit. Thank you. And I always tell people too, like, if you don't know if you can qualify, worst case is a nurse comes out and says, you don't qualify right now, but at least you know, and then at least like you, you know, we can keep track of you and see if there's been any decline or anything. And at least you have a support system. Um, our hospice um, company also, we have a bereavement team and you don't have to be on the hospice service. Um, so this is a community effort that we like to do is our outreach program. So if you know of someone that's really struggling that may have lost somebody or even, you know, struggling with maybe even their diagnosis or something, it just needs, it's that bereavement of loss of your health. You know, you can reach out to me and I can get a bereavement person to contact you and just talk through that. And that's a completely free service that we like to do for the community as an outreach. Um, so if you know of anyone who could use that, please feel free to let me know for that. Um, another myth we have is I always thought hospice was a place, that building that I passed away, uh, passed on the way home from work. And, and the fact is hospice is a philosophy care of care. 
It's not a place. Hospice can be provided at any place that the patient calls home, whether that is a personal home, a skilled nursing center, assisted living, or anywhere else. Another myth is, I didn't know that hospice could help take care of my dad and his assisted living department. He could have really benefited from the support from the hospice caregiving team. The fact is that hospice provides care wherever that patient calls home, including but not limited to assisted livings, skilled nursing homes, independent livings, and personal homes. Another myth that we kind of talked about is the doctor said I had to sign a do not resuscitate order to be able to be put on hospice. And I just can't do that, it seems so final. When the fact is a patient can receive hospice without having a DNR signed. The hospice regulation actually says that hospices cannot discriminate against patients because of their advanced direct choices. And then the last myth I have is I didn't consider hospice care early enough because dad was still getting blood transfusions regularly. We weren't ready to stop because each time he would get one, it seemed to make him feel better for a few days. And we wanted him to feel like himself for as long as possible. And the fact, and this is what we talked about, the Medicare hospice benefit, it could, you could still be on it with chemo, radiation, blood transfusion, or other treatments if those treatments are providing comfort for patients eligible to receive the benefit. Um, so um, it's always good to have a conversation just to kind of see what is available to you. Maybe that aggressive treatment, we have to hold off for a little bit, or maybe there's even another diagnosis that we can cover under that Medicare benefit and you can still do your chemo treatments or whatever you have. So it never hurts to see what's available to you because you work so hard for it. So everyone deserves the highest level of care that you can get. Um, and that's why I love my job because I get to give people the highest level of care and it's completely free. <laughs> so um, that's always a good thing. So does anyone have any questions for all of that stuff? Darlene, you're mute. Yeah, I just, just, I was typing and, and uh, sometimes my clicks can be very loud. Um, so I did get a request um, to receive a brochure. Um, if you can email me uh, some information, I would be happy to forward that out to everybody who's joined us today. Yeah, for sure. I'll, um, I'll receive that. I also um, have something I um, have also um, too. Um, this is kind of like, a comparison chart. So it kind of like tells you who can benefit between home health, palliative and hospice, That's awesome. uh, what services are required, because um, we also have our own palliative team too. Um, and what palliative is, it's pain or symptom management. So even like if you're taking cancer treatments and stuff and you're experiencing pain or a lot of symptoms, um, a nurse practitioner can actually come to your health house and help with that. Uh, we like to send a nurse practitioner out once a week for the first month, and then she'll determine kind of like if she needs to come less or more the next month. Um, and that's built just like a doctor's visit. So it's just the nurse practitioner actually coming to your house instead of you having to go somewhere else. So um, my sister-in-law's dad right now is doing cancer treatments, experiencing some, some pain and some discomfort. Um, so we got him on our palliative team um, to where the nurse practitioner is coming to the house and helping with that. So um, and that's built just like a doctor's visit too. Um, before we send a nurse practitioner out, we'll let you know what the copay is. Um, if there's one, just so you know that and you don't have us come out and be like, oh, okay. Um, but I'll um, email you that too, because I think that's just some good information also. Absolutely. And then you can give anybody my cell phone or my email too, if they have any other questions. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's wonderful. And um, one of the things that I've uh, found out in just my couple short years of being employed here is um, that a lot of people don't know what palliative care is, or that it's available to them. The, um, the another kind of uh, um, hospice myth to throw in there is they think that palliative care is hospice. And it can be part of hospice, but it can, but it's separate. So um, that's one of the things that we, you know, we're trying to do is to educate that if if uh, somebody is experiencing some pain, it's like talk to your medical team about, you know, palliative care and and look into to getting um, that service set up. So I'm so glad that you covered that, Wendy. Thank you. Yeah, and with palliative care too, you can even reach out to me, and we can actually reach out to your doctor asking for the order for that, so you don't even have to do that. We can just say, this person's experienced some pain, would like to have palliative care, and 
I haven't experienced a doctor yet that won't write that because it doesn't cost them anything. You know, it's still just like a doctor's visit. Um, and like, yeah, you could be 20 something years old and on palliative care. Like if you got in a bad car accident and was experiencing pain while you're going through all the recovering for that, you can actually have palliative care at any age. So um, if you're experiencing pain or symptoms that just can be out of control, that can be palliative. But a lot of people do think palliative is hospice. Yeah. Yeah, so that's awesome. I, I appreciate you uh, sending us that um, that information and then yeah, we'll sure. um, forward that on. Okay, perfect. I just have one comment. Thank you so much, first of all. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a true believer in hospice. My dad um, uh, had cancer and he was put into hospice and um, we didn't call it graduation. I really like your word much better. We just said he got kicked out of hospice at the end of the six months. He was in one that went to six months. And then six years later, he went uh, back into hospice and unfortunately did not graduate that time. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I like that. You graduate from hospice. It's a very yeah. positive way to look at it. And I, more people need to know that because that's what I share with people. Um, you know, we had a friend who recently passed away and he honestly died the day after he was put in hospice because he mm -hmm. believed it was the end. And I'm like, oh, no, no, my dad got, you know, graduated. You can yeah. graduate, you know. You yeah, just, exactly. And a uh, lot of people will call yeah. us like during a crisis situation when it's the very end where we want to know people hopefully for a year or two years, because when it is that crisis situation, you feel like you're sitting with an extended family member, not a complete stranger yes. during that time. So yeah, but I like to say graduate because I think it's a big you know, it's a yeah. big accomplishment. You get healthier and you don't need our services anymore. It's terrific. And I'll add that to my repertoire when I'm singing the praises of hospice. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. I wish I could just see everyone in person. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have any comments or questions while we have Wendy? It's me, I mean. Um, I wish I knew about this particular, you know, hospice provisions because all I knew was only when you have six months more, then they'll come and do the service. Otherwise, you know, um, if it's longer than they will take you, I guess that's the older policy. I didn't realize that um, there, you know, you can add a few more things there. I wish I knew that because I needed that when my husband was mm. at home. And I was really, I could hardly think of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm sorry for your loss, but yeah, to be able to have that support. And you know, to qualify you, it does have that chronic illness that could have a diagnosis of six months or less, but none of us know, you know, like how long we are with cancer or how long we, people could live with COPD for years and years, but it could have that diagnosis. And that's what people don't realize it could be, not it has to be, um, because you do need support. I was a caregiver for both of my grandparents. Um, and unfortunately I lost them both within six months of each other. Uh, but caregiving is the hardest job anyone will ever have. Um, you feel stressed, you feel all these mixed emotions and I feel guilty about feeling certain emotions. And it's really great to be able to have a support team. So thank you for sharing. I'm sorry um, for your loss. And I too have to uh, sing the praises of hospice. My uh, father had small cell lung cancer back in the early 1990s. So this is a, a number of years ago, um, but they were able to bring dad home. He didn't want to be in the hospital. So they were able to bring him home and they arranged the bedroom. And so um, he was in the hospital room and the mom was in their bed and they were side by side so they could still be together. And the nurses were just fabulous. And you know, they brought everything out and they were available. And um, so, it is a, a fabulous program. Um, you know, dad did not graduate uh, from that program, but he did receive the care um, that was so vital and uh, okay. well, a big believer. Yeah, me too. Like I, both my grandparents were on it and um, it was definitely a support, you know, even though my gramps, when um, the nurse or the aide would come, he'd be like, no, that's my, what my granddaughter does. You can just sit here and talk to my granddaughter and do it like when she gets home. So, you know, but that it was nice to have the support of everyone. <laughs> so 
Okay, any other comments or questions? Well, Wendy, we greatly appreciate you uh, stepping in and, and uh, uh, being our presenter today. I think I, I learned some things. I was thinking this, you know, I've been a social worker for a couple of years now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, and I thought I knew what I knew about Medicare, but um, I definitely learned some uh, more mm. things, information today. And I was copiously taking notes as you were talking. So I do appreciate you uh, spending your um, your um, uh, lunchtime with us. And I will look forward to um, uh, forwarding your information on. And again, yeah. thank you for your time. And for everybody who's on the call, um, because of we're able to provide our services for free through. Uh, the funding that we have, we do have a, a survey monkey evaluation that'll just um, ask 10 short questions um, and uh, that we report back to our funders. Uh, so um, I'm going to send everybody uh, the link to that survey monkey and thank you in advance for completing that evaluation. And one more time, Wendy, thank you for your time and your um, expertise. Yes, thank you. Yeah, feel free to reach out to me. That's my passion to educate and just to meet with families. So uh, reach out for me for anything and I'll email you those documents too later today. Awesome.